Hello everybody, it's Kara from Wild Book Garden and today I am here with two quick reviews on a couple of proper romances that also have a mystery element. Um, one of these is definitely more officially a mystery than the other, um, but I do think these kind of go together and I received both of these from the publisher in exchange for an honest review, um, so thank you so much. And at the time of posting this video, both of these books are available to buy. They have come out and these are not like connected to each other in any way except that they are both in the same uh, proper romance line. Um, which means that there are no explicit scenes and I really liked both of these. So I'm going to start with The Merchant and the Rogue by Sarah M. Eden. This is the third book in the Penny Dreadful, I think it's the Dread Penny series. I think that's what the name of the series is. And we follow different main characters in each book. Um, and this one I think was actually my favorite in the series so far. I really enjoyed it. Um, so we're following two main characters. One of them is Brogan Donnelly and he's an Irish immigrant. He left Dublin a long time ago with his sister, but he does miss it. Um, and he is part of the Dread Penny Society, which are a group of Penny Dreadful writers who use the money from their sales um, to work towards social change in London. Like they use that money to help people, they help um, get people out of poverty, they give them jobs and like they, they get kids into school instead of like horrible work situations. Um, they help save people from things like human trafficking and so they do a lot of really great work in the city of London and that is funded by their Penny Dreadfuls. Um, and so Brogan is an author and he is also part of this society. Um, and then our other main character is a woman named Vera Sorokina and she is a Russian immigrant although she has lived in London most of her life. And that is actually one of the things that her and Brogan talk about is like their different feelings about the country that they were born in. Like Brogan really misses Ireland and wants to go back someday and Vera doesn't even remember Russia. Um, and she feels guilty that she doesn't speak the language as well as she should. Um, so that's a really interesting um, part of this story. And Vera and her father own a print shop and Brogan ends up getting a job there. He's kind of doing an undercover mission for the Dread Penny Society um, and so he can't tell Vera who he is. Um, he also doesn't want her to know that he's an author because her and her father had some bad experiences with authors um, and they really like don't trust them anymore. And of course the two of them end up developing a relationship and they start working together um, on trying to uncover this mystery that Brogan is working on. Um, although he can't tell Vera that he is part of this secret society or anything. Um, and like I said, I really enjoyed this one. I really liked our main characters. Um, I really loved Brogan. He, like, I really felt for him and how he is so used to thinking of himself as, like, just the backup guy. Like, he has been seen as that and, like, told that that's what he's good for for so long that he just doesn't think he's capable of being a leader, um, like, of, of doing more, I guess, obvious work. And so seeing him realize that he can do that is just really wonderful. Um, I also liked Vera. She was just a really enjoyable character and I really liked their romance together. Also, as with the other books in this series, we actually get excerpts from two different Penny Dreadfuls like scattered throughout the book. And I really enjoyed both of those. I think those are really fun elements. Um, one in particular I really enjoyed and then the other one, um, I ended up really liking, like being very impressed with where that one went. Um, so that's always a fun element. And I just really like the themes and like the premise of this series. Like using literature to fund social change is such a cool idea. I I love the way that's done. Um, like I love that that's like the premise of the series. I like the way that social issues were touched on in this book. Like one of the things that Vera and Brogan like bond over or talk about is their like being kind of cultural outsiders um, and their different experiences. Um, and then I also appreciate that that is contrasted with a supporting character named Stone who is a black man who was formerly enslaved um, in the United States. And I do appreciate like the the like references to the fact that their experiences as outsiders are very different from the way that Stone is treated um, as a black man and so I really like that that is touched on as well. Um, as far as the plot, I, by this point in the series I, I'm kind of resigned to the overarching like conspiracy plot. I mentioned in my review for book two that that was very frustrating. I think by this point I guess I've just like accepted <laughs> that that's gonna be a thing because that part didn't frustrate me as much here. So altogether, I really enjoyed this. I gave The Merchant and the Rogue four stars. Like, I think if you just pick this one up, you can definitely follow what's going on. So like, I do think you can jump in here, but overall I have been really enjoying the series. And like I said, I gave it four stars. And then the other book I'm going to be talking about, again, this is not at all connected to that series. Um, although I hope it's the beginning of a new series. And that is The Matchmaker's Lonely Heart by Nancy Campbell Allen. Um, and this one I think is more like officially a historical, like a proper historical romance plus mystery. Like I think the mystery is a more prominent element. Um, and we're, again, we are following two different main characters. Our female main character is named Amelie um, and she works at her mother's, or her aunt's 
magazine, I think. Um, and she answers, like she kind of matches people up. She's sort of like a matchmaking service and she gives advice on romance. Um, and one day she ends up following a couple to kind of spy on them a little bit just to like see how things are going. She wants to check basically that she did a good job setting them up. Um, and so while she's doing that, this our other main character who's a an inspector named Michael, um, Michael Baker I think is his name, he shows up and sees her like spying on them and he's like this is suspicious because he's actually investigating the man who was on the date and Amelie is like no he's wonderful like he would never do something that you're like accusing him of I'm gonna prove it to you because she kind of has a crush on this man that Michael's observing and so Michael asks for her help by like getting him into this book club where the guy is gonna be and she's only supposed to help get him into this like gathering but of course they end up working together on the mystery and then they maybe start developing feelings for each other um, and I really really enjoyed this one like like, I this was so cute I think this is probably one of my favorite things I've read from this like proper romance line actually I really really enjoyed this um, I think the romantic chemistry between the two of them was really good I really liked both of them as main characters like Michael and Amelie I just really really enjoyed um, I love that Amelie is this romantic and I love that even though we see her kind of get a rude awakening in some ways about like some of the really dark things that can happen in the world and the terrible things that people can do she doesn't ever lose who she is like she is still a very bright person like she's a very optimistic and romantic person and i love that she still had that by the end even if that is tempered now um by a little bit of i don't want to say like understanding because it's not like she was unintelligent um but a little more experience but we do definitely still see who she is um and i really liked michael as well and their romance was just so cute it definitely has some like grumpy sunshine vibes which i really loved um there's one scene in particular <laughs> i really like um one of my favorite things about their romance is that like they both get flustered around the other because that's something that always kind of frustrates me when like it's a man and a woman in a relationship and the man is always like cool and collected and put together and is not like flustered by anything um including their romantic partner and then like the girl like the female lead is the one who um you know is like has, has trouble concentrating around him or blah 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 so i really like that, that was equal here there's one scene in particular that is just so cute and i don't want to spoil it because it's like such a great moment but um let's just say that like michael is not immune to that and i loved that um i also really loved the friendship between amelie and her cousins um i'm really hoping that we do get more books following those cousins that would be fantastic um and i just really love their bond and how we have these like multiple really smart competent women who are like working like they're um they're all like employed and that is something that people are still a little um, surprised by in this time period but they're just like doing their own thing and um, making a good life for themselves and I love that I also think the mystery was compelling and interesting um, there were a couple of things near the end that I think maybe I don't know if I felt like they needed more setup or if they felt kind of like unnecessary um, there were like a couple of things near the end that I think didn't work as well um, but overall I really enjoyed this I originally gave this book four stars but like I'm thinking I might bump this up to 4.5 because I really did have such a great time with this one um, I didn't want to put it down like I flew through this um, and I just like really enjoyed the romance and the characters again most of the mystery I think was really well done and I'm really really hoping that this becomes a series and I give the matchmakers lonely heart 4.5 stars I'm officially bumping it up so those were two different proper romances that have a mystery element again I think this one is definitely a mystery like I would even say this is like a like romantic suspense maybe um, which is how Bethany described it I will link her video down below where she also talked about these books among others um, and then this one I think is more of a proper romance that has like some mystery elements to it um, but yeah please comment down below and let me know if you have read either of these like cause, like I said they have come out now um, or if you're planning to pick any of them up I do think these were both really enjoyable um, and I've been really enjoying the things that I have read from this proper romance line um, so please comment down below and let me know if you are interested in either of these or have read them already thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!